we are getting ready to um, prepare the bread that we put together and I let it sleep in the uh, in the refrigerator for um, overnight so we're going to take it out you can see all the good bubbles that are in there it looks it's looking good I'm going to take the top off of that container okay I've got the top off and when you look down in there you can see the bread I have a little bit of flour and I'm only going to put just a teeny tiny bit of flour on this parchment paper that I've laid on this surface I'm going to take a teeny tiny bit of flour and I'm going to sprinkle it onto the top of the bread and the reason for that is that it's going to make it a little easier to get out now okay. it's pretty dry I'm going to put it on my surface and roll it just a little bit. Now, what I've done is that I've attempted to stretch it just a bit, and you kind of have to let it rest a little bit because, after all, it's extremely cold. And I want it to look somewhat like a baguette. And because it's so cold, as soon as you stretch it, it kind of stretches back. So I'm kind of working with it a little bit. And uh, as it warms up, it will be a little more co cooperative. It's just, you know, it's it's cold and uh, a little stiff. So we're going to give it some time. You're going to have to let it. You're going to have to let it uh, relax. Let it warm up. I'm going to cover this with plastic and let it rise one more time. You can hear my coffee pot over there going. I'm trying to even it out as much as possible. Now, what I'm also going to do is that I'm going to sprinkle just a little bit of flour over it. I'm going to take a sharp knife and I'm going to cut uh, about a quarter of an inch down, about a quarter of an inch. And what that's going to allow is that when it bakes, it's going to let it open up and it's going to be really pretty once it, once it bakes and you'll see. But anyway, you want to do that. I'm going to put just a tiny bit more flour. I want a pretty color. I want it to come out very pretty. Okay. So the extra flour that's on this sheet we do not want to end up in the oven because what will happen is that it will burn and we don't want it to burn. So I'm going to take this up for just a second, put it over on my chopping block surface, and put this excess flour back into my cup. Now, for baking this today, I would normally bake it in my cast iron uh, pan with a top. But today, we're not going to do that. I'm going to warm some water in the oven, and I'm going to actually bake it with a pan of water underneath. So while the oven is warming up and everything else is warming up, I'm going to put this in the microwave so that it can have a nice, quiet environment to rise in. And I'm going to turn the oven on so it can start to get hot. Well, guys, because this particular 
bread uh, is too long for my pan, I'm going to um, add a container of hot water in the bottom of my oven so that it has a nice warm moist environment. I'm going to let it stay in there about 30 minutes and heat up the water and then we'll be ready to put the bread in on a cookie sheet. Well, what do you think? There it is. I just took it out of the oven, turned my oven off, and uh, it is a beauty. Listen to it. Hear the hollow sound? All right. Now, this is nice and hot. And normally, I wouldn't slice it with it being quite this hot, but I do want you to see, and I don't want to forget. So what I'm going to do, what happens is, is that when you slice it too early, it tends to uh, start to dry out. And so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to slice it in the middle. I'm going to have to stand it so it doesn't lose its moisture. And um, I just want you to see it. I know it's going to be great. And I think I better go get some butter because I think I'm going to want to put some butter on it. A little butter never hurts. I'm going to stick that right there. And I'm going to get my knife that I'm going to use to slice it. And I decided, since I like the end, I'm going to slice, whack off a little bit of the end. Oh my goodness. Look at that. I don't know if you can see. It is beautiful. And it's so hot and moist. Oh, perfect. Now notice, I'm standing it up kind of like a house. And I'm going to have to prop it. I'm going to use my olive bottle, my olive oil bottle, to put behind it so it'll stand up. Because I do want it to cool off just a little bit. But in the meantime, I am going to get this baby sliced. I am going to... Put a little softened butter on it. Mm -mm -mm. And there we go. Woo! Oh, that's going to be good. And I guess I'll give the big guy a piece as well so that he can tell me what he thinks. He's, he's a little under the weather today, but you know, there's always, it's kind of like jello. There's always room for jello. Well, in this case, there's always room for a, hot, a little piece of hot fresh made bread so we need a little butter on all of these pieces that are kind of crumbling there we go mm, mm, mm. wow wow mm, mm, mm. notice I'm standing it up so at the end, moisture won't come out of the end. Mm. This is my piece. Yummy. Mm. That is so good. Guys, you've got to try this. Have a great day. Tonight, we are going to have my favorite, and that is cabbage and potatoes. What better combination? Actually, we're going to have cabbage, potatoes, and some tomatoes. Now, I have about half a pound of center-cut bacon that I am frying off and I'm seasoning it seasoning it with pepperoncino, some uh, black pepper, and at this point I'm not adding salt. I am going to add a pinch of sugar and um, because I already know we're going to need sugar for the cabbage. And uh, we're going to uh, I've done cabbage before and pretty much the same thing, but um, I just thought you should know that, you know, when you have a big holiday coming up like we do with Christmas, 
and you know you're going to be eating things that are a little bit out of the ordinary, then you may want to have a few vegetable nights. So I'm going to put, this is sugar that's going in. I want it just to just take the bitterness out of the cabbage. You know, cabbage is pretty good. I had a chance to, as I was cutting it, to... Um, to taste a little bit, but I'm going to throw in, I want this to uh, continue cooking. I have baked potatoes in the oven. They've been going about 45 minutes at this point. They're pretty big. And I'm going to add some onion to the pan and then continue to add more seasoning. So here's our onions. And stir those around. Now at this point, because the onions obviously don't come salted, I am going to add just a teeny tiny bit of salt. I'm going to let that simmer for a little while. So I'll bring you back in just a minute. Okay, you can see that the onions are changing colors, they're getting translucent. I'm adding in, oh, I'd say about a half teaspoon of uh, garlic granules and uh, let that go. You can see the bacon is looking pretty good. I'm going to let that go for just a little while longer. I'm measuring out about a half cup of chicken broth. And that chicken broth I'm going to add to the pan and then cover the pan once um, I get the cabbage in. Okay, I'm going to start to toss the cabbage into the pan. And the cabbage is pretty wet. Trying to shake quite a bit of the water off. It needs the moisture so it can steam. Now this is going to look like an awful lot of cabbage, but once it starts to cook down, you're going to go in. Oh, is that it? Okay. There we go. I'm going to add just a tiny bit of salt and pepper. And I'm going to add in that half cup of chicken broth. There's one, that's a fourth of a cup. So I need two. And two. That's it. I'm going to cover this baby up and let it cook. Okay, you're going to start to see. I'm going to give it a little stir. You see how it's cooking down. bacon. Notice I didn't crisp it. I want it more like ham rather than crispy bacon. Okay, I'm going to cover it again. It's been about five or six minutes already, so I'm going to let this go until the potatoes are ready, and we'll be ready to eat dinner. Well, the cabbage is ready, and uh, I want you to see this uh, potato. Whoops. Uh-oh. I'm connected. You see this potato? He's a monster. 
but we're going to get him all buttered up and get some cheese on him. And we're going to get those uh, cabbages all surrounding him. Put on some green onions and it's going to be on. Okay, now there's the potato. He's ready. He's got butter, got cheese, got tomatoes, got green onions. I'm going to add the, the uh, cabbage, which is nice and hot. And we're going to be ready to sit down to dinner. Dinner is served. We've got the cabbage on the plate, and we are ready for dinner. I hope your Monday night is going to be as much fun as ours. We're going to spend the evening with each other, just enjoying, watching a few movies, and having a great time. Have a blessed evening. Tuesday night and we're going to have a quick dinner. It's um, pork chops and some spinach with some tomatoes and onions. So uh, let's get to cooking. We've got these nice one inch thick pork chops that I have seasoned with uh, paprika and uh, black pepper, salt, uh, garlic powder, onion powder. And I've have some oil that's been heating in the bottom of the pan. I think I better cut it up just a little bit. And I only need two. And actually, I'm do because they're so big, I know I'm going to cut these in half and use one of these for either a stir fry or for fajitas later on in the week. And um, tonight, we'll just eat it as a regular pork chop. So, let's go. We're browning these pork chops up and we're gonna we're gonna flip them. Then I'm going to put them into the oven so they can finish cooking while I do the spinach and onions and tomatoes on top. Okay now you can see these pork chops they are nice and golden brown and uh, I'm gonna take them I'm gonna put them on my sheet pan and um, they're not quite done they need to go in the oven for a few minutes and uh, because I want them nice and moist, I've been uh, putting them on their side so that not only are they brown on top, but they're also brown on the sides. I just think they look a lot prettier when you do that. So if you just give them a little flip and hold on to it for a minute, they will uh, brown up on the, on the sides as well. And that, I think that's really the only problem that you have with uh, one inch cuts is that the back and the front gets nice and pretty but the sides sometimes get left out so we have to make sure that that doesn't happen so in just a few seconds i'm going to start to throw the onions in once i get the meat out i'm going to put the bread in while the meat's in and uh, this dinner is coming together in less than 20 minutes i've turned the heat down slightly on this pan you'll see that because of uh, cooking the, the meat in this pan before, my onions are getting a very beautiful color on them. I've got a little bottle of uh, apple cider vinegar on the side. I'm going to add that as I put the, the spinach in. I'm going to get the spinach good and wet. I'm going to toss it in, cover the, this pan, and turn it down and let it simmer. Okay, I'm going to add the spinach. Now this is kind of like the cabbage where it looks like it's a ton, but once it starts to break down, it's going to be almost nothing. See the steaming. Have a little bit more. There we go. Now I'm going to add some, a little salt, a little pepper, a little uh, some pepperoncino. Give it a little kick. Turn it down just a little bit. Here's some pepper. Need a little garlic. 
And I got that. Okay. I'll let that go for a few minutes. I'm going to put the top on it and I'm going to let it saute while the rest of the meal is coming together. Now remember all of that spinach that we had in this uh, skillet? That's it. And dinner is ready. Well, look, let's pan you over this way. There's the bread that we made yesterday. And uh, here's the pork chops. Let's see if I can get them a little closer to you so you can see them. I pulled them out of the oven. They were on a 450 oven during the time that it took the, the uh, spinach to cook. Between it and the bread, they shared an oven. So, dinner is ready. And uh, we're going to have a delicious meal. Tonight, I'm preparing a chicken, garlic, mushroom, uh, and rice dish. In this skillet already, I have in about a half a stick of butter. I have a whole onion. I have some leftover cream of mushroom soup that I made. Yum, yum. And um, I'm getting ready to add in two sticks of celery. I'm going to put that right over there. The two sticks of celery. I'm going to add in about a half teaspoon of salt and a half teaspoon of pepper. I'm going to also add in probably a couple of dashes of hot sauce just to give a little extra zing. And actually, you won't even taste it. It's in the background. And then I'm going to nestle in some chicken. And this chicken, these are little um, chicken pieces that have been cut up because I want them small. I'm going to put them amongst the rice and just cook it all in together. Kind of like a chicken and rice casserole with mushrooms. I guess that's what we should call it. Chicken and rice, garlic, mushroom, casserole. Hmm. I'll have to think about that. Now, so anyway, we've got this going and uh, I'll take you with me. I'm adding in the teaspoon of salt. That's after, after all, fresh chicken doesn't come salted. I'm going to add in a teaspoon of pepper. Now I've already seasoned the chicken and uh, I'm going to have to do this a little smaller. So let's see, let's see if my half, yep, half teaspoon to go in there. So I'll need two of these. Hmm, I don't know. Let's try just a little bit. And there we go. And I'm going to add in a little bit of um, some garlic granules as well because they have a little bit different flavor sometimes from the actual garlic. Put in about a half teaspoon because the garlic should be kicked up in this dish and I'm going to add just a little bit of paprika in for a warm color just a little I like the color that it's going to give okay now so we're gonna let this come together and I'll bring you back in my skillet I've taken out all the vegetables out and I have in here some oil, a little bit of butter, and I'm going to saute all of the chicken. You'll notice that I purposely floured the chicken, and that's so that it will um, create uh, its butter, its, uh, its gravy. And so I'm just going to continue to move this around until the chicken's done. I'm keeping it on low. I may have to add a little more oil, but, you know, if I do, that's good. You'll see all the good little pieces on the bottom. I want to create all of that because that's going to be a part of that flavor. As it gets closer to being done, 
then I'm going to add in some mushrooms. And uh, today, because I thought I had fresh mushrooms, I usually try to freeze them. And for those of you who know, you know, typically no one freezes their mushrooms, but I do. And it works, especially when you're going to put them into uh, a casserole or some kind of dish that you're going to cook. It works just fine. And so I'm going to put the mushrooms in. Um, since I'm using jarred mushrooms, I'm going to throw in the juice. Because after all, I came up with a name. Guess what? It's going to be a deconstructed chicken garlic mushroom dish. A deconstructed chicken garlic and rice dish. There we go. Deconstructed chicken garlic and rice dish. There we go. We can create whatever we want in our kitchen. Because guess what, guys? It's our kitchen. So we can do whatever we like. Whatever works for you and your family, that's what you do. We like rice. We like chicken. We love mushrooms. And we love all the other good stuff. So, for dinner tonight, this is what we're going to have. Enjoy. The skillet. The chicken, the chicken is just about done. You notice I've got lots of little bits that are down there on the bottom that have browned up. And uh, they're not only sticking to the pan, they're sticking to my spoon. Now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to add a jar of mushroom with the juice. And I'm going to kind of mix that in. And then I think at this point I may mix in another jar or one may do and I think one jar will be okay now notice it kind of looks creamy and almost like a gravy now I'm going to add in those vegetables that we had now to the vegetables I added about a tablespoon of fresh garlic now we had garlic powder in there And I'm going to stir all of that up. Now I'm going to loosen this up just a little bit with some, uh, a little bit of, uh, like I said, chicken broth. And uh, let that come to a simmer. And I'm going to let that simmer for about an hour. I'm putting in one cup. You can see that it's bubbling pretty good. But I'm going to add in a cup of chicken broth and give that a good stir. Now this is going to go over some hot rice. We'll have a salad on the side. Oh, that's going to be so good. It smells great. That garlic is just permeating everything. Now, if it gets a little too thick for you, you can certainly add in more chicken broth, and I may certainly do that later on. I'm going to give it just a little taste so I can see whether or not I need more salt or pepper. Now, I think that's perfect. Now, wow. Excellent garlic flavor. I think I will add one more cup since I'm going to let it simmer for a while. I think I'll put in another cup of broth. I said it is pretty thick. And we want lots of juiciness to go over the rice. There we go. Now once that simmers, it's ready. Just have to pull out the rice and we're good to go. I've got the rice cooking as we're cooking. So it is ready. 
Well, it's a sunny morning in Virginia, and I love it. There is just so much to do. You can feel Christmas in the air. There's baking to do. There's shopping still yet to do. There are gifts left to wrap. I only have three more left, but that's pretty good. But they still have to be done. I have uh, a ham to bake, a turkey to bake. So there's lots to do. So there's just so much work. But you know what? The good news is, is that this is a wonderful holiday. It's a wonderful holiday. It's a great time to be able to spend with family. We have family coming from as far as Boston, from New York, all these different places that are going to be spending time with us. So we are just very blessed to uh, have them coming and to enjoy time with them. It's just a great time. I pray that your family is excited about being together and uh, I had some bad news yesterday I had a friend who uh, lost her sister yesterday and um, I, I my heart goes out to her I can't imagine how she's feeling today and the unfortunate thing is that you know with that happening at this time of the year every Christmas it the thoughts always go back to what has taken place but you know what God is in control. He knows exactly what he's doing. And so we just have to wait and see what the plan is. But I say to you, have a very, very, very Merry Christmas. Have a blessed time with your family. And certainly serve up some warm, delicious dinners with your family. Take time to give each person a warm hug. Give them your best smile. Because, you know, we just don't know what people are going through every day. So I pray that you are safe and that I will see you after the holidays. Be blessed. Let's take a look at this week's menu and see if we've stayed on track. Let's see, Monday we had cabbage and baked potatoes. Tuesday we had pork chops with spinach. Wednesday, I had a potluck vegetable soup. Mmm, it was so good. Now, Thursday, we had a creamy Parmesan garlic mushroom chicken combination that I renamed. And uh, I just called it a deconstructed chicken and mushroom garlic rice. Uh, was casserole, but it was deconstructed. Then, um... This week we're fixing brownies. We've got some Parker House rolls going. Uh, the broccoli cheddar quiche, I think I'm actually going to move to next week because I just haven't had time. And we've got other things to do and other places to go with the salad. Now, for Sunday, of course, as usual, we've got our Creek Cafe. Um, I'm planning on baking a rum and coke ham. And I'm going to a jingle party. And I'm going to be taking some goodies for that as well. So, let's see what the grocery list is looking like. Actually, it's not too bad. What I did, I didn't want a whole ham because we just don't have that many people who eat ham. So, I only got a half of a spiral sliced ham that I'm going to doctor. I did um, purchase pork chops. And my plan was to get some country ham. But by the time I got to the grocery store, there was none to be had. I love country ham biscuits on Christmas morning. Didn't get that. Got milk, got butter, check. And in fact, I got eggs, and I didn't put them on there, but I did purchase them. Didn't need any canned goods. Now, for baking, I had to purchase sugar, flour, brownie mix. And actually, I did brownie mix because... I just didn't have time to do it from scratch, but no one will know by the time I finish with that brownie mix that it is a box. Now, produce-wise, I needed lots and lots and lots of greens, and my family will laugh if they take a look at this because uh, they know at Christmas uh, everybody wants the greens. Uh, I did purchase some green beans because we needed some here, broccoli, peas, mushrooms. I needed some more rice. 
and I purchased some raw nuts. And actually, I'm going to be making some candy with those raw nuts, but just haven't gotten to it yet, so it's coming. And you see there's nothing under the freezer list, so the list is not too bad considering we're going into the week. This is the week before Christmas. The Parker House rolls have risen, and uh, they are beautiful. I'm getting ready to uh, put them into the oven. I will butter them once I bring them out. And I've already cooked one pan over there. I'll show, tell, show you what they look like. And these I'm going to kind of keep very light brown because I'm going to be giving part of these to a friend for her, th her Christmas and uh, then the rest I'm going to give to someone else. So, enjoy. Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you, I'm going to put these in a 350 oven because I don't want them to get too brown. And I definitely don't want them to burn on the bottom. 350. Well, are you ready to see what they're going to look like? I hope so, because they are delicious. I put this particular batch, these were the ones I had left over when I was first putting that other pan together. And uh, they are uh, not necessarily the best form, but these were the ends that, uh, as I cut the, the, the rectangles, there were a few. Now, see how pretty that is? Mmm. I've basted them with butter, and I'm actually going to put just a little bit of butter on this one. Can you see that? Oh my goodness. Mmm, 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 mmm. They're good, they're sweet, they're light, the texture's great, and Miranda, I know you're going to love them. These rolls are beautiful. I'm going to um, take my brush and I'm going to brush on just a little butter while they're nice and hot so that the the tops will stay soft you see how nice and golden brown that they got now these i'm not going to sample because i already know what they taste like you've seen that and uh actually remember i told you these are going to a friend the butter to kind of run down the side as well. It just keeps them nice and moist. Now once these are cooled, I'm going to bag them and uh, I'll take them to church with me tomorrow so that she can have them for the holiday. Yummy! Those are mine and these belong to a friend so no tasting. It's a frosty morning and it certainly looks a lot like Christmas on my way to church and uh, once I get there I'll uh, have our service have our coffee cafe and just enjoy the day what a blessing take the time to be a blessing to someone else today have a great week and enjoy your delicious meals